Now let's look how tRNAs get to carry a specific amino acid. This is very important aspect of molecular biology because if a tRNA carrying an anticodon for say alanine by mistake gets to carry a different amino acid and that different amino acid gets incorporated in the protein where alanine was supposed to be it will completely change the properties of that molecule so it will be very catastrophic so let's look at this process first of all let me introduce you to a very important enzyme or group of enzymes called amino acyl tRNA synthetase this is a group of enzymes each one in this group is specific for particular amino acid and its corresponding tRNA so here we have this enzyme recognizing one of these enzymes will recognize a specific amino acid and its corresponding tRNA so there are as many amino acyl tRNA synthesizes as many tRNAs there would be so enzyme has three active sites for three molecules it binds the amino acid a specific amino acid it will bind an ATP molecule we know what that is and it will catalyze this reaction in which a pyrophosphate molecule is released which we know releases a huge amount of energy and here an amino acid and AMP bond is formed this is a very high energy bond and this ultimately will be transferred to the tRNA in the second phase the amino acyl AMP and tRNA they come to this enzyme this enzyme catalyzes the next reaction it transfers this bond amino acyl AMP bond and makes amino acyl tRNA plus AMP is released so this tRNA now carries a particular amino acid the carboxy domain of amino acid is attached to the three prime end of the free RNA hydroxyl group on the ribose we know what three prime end of the uh, the RNA tRNA is it is basically the the hydroxyl group on the three prime carbon in the pentose sugar the carboxy domain we know amino acids have amino and carboxy domains so a specific amino acid carboxy domain is attached to the hydroxyl group of or present on the three prime end of the tRNA this is very high energy bond as I mentioned and it supplies the energy for the synthesis of polypeptides or proteins this mechanism is very very well conserved because if there were any mistakes made here it will result in uh, of course a major catastrophe for that organism so this correctly so is also referred to as the second genetic code the first we said is the codon specifying a specific amino acid the second genetic code basically is which tRNA the specific tRNA binding a specific amino acid so let's look at this process with the help of a diagram here we have this enzyme it first binds ATP molecule and the amino acid here's a specific amino acid whatever amino acid it is it binds these two molecules here is the active site of this enzyme for this catalysis pyrophosphate is removed releasing high amount of energy a very high energy bond between that amino acid and AMP molecule is generated and therefore we can say this particular amino acid has now been activated in the next stage the tRNA comes in now this tr this enzyme has to recognize this this particular amino acid very very important and very very importantly it has to recognize a specific tRNA that tRNA is going to carry only that particular amino acid and that particular amino acid only so when these molecules come together on the surface of this enzyme this enzyme catalyzes the, the second reaction forming a high energy tRNA bond to an amino acid here I said the carboxy domain of this amino acid is bound to the three prime hydroxyl group of the pentose sugar on the tRNA now this tRNA has been attached to the amino acid its specific amino acid we call this tRNA now that this tRNA has been charged 
and it is now ready to take part in protein synthesis. Here I would like to mention a very important experiment, Benzer experiment. They wanted, the question was, what is recognized? Is amino acid recognized or tRNA recognized during the protein synthesis? So do, they took tRNA molecules which were attached to cysteine molecules. Here's the structure of cysteine on your screen. And they chemically modified this amino acid. While it was attached to that, its respective tRNA molecule, they chemically modified into alanine. Here's the structure of alanine. Basically, they removed the sulfur and hydrogen atoms from this uh, amino acid. This hybrid or changed tRNA was put into a protein synthesizing system. Everywhere in the synthesis of this protein, where cysteine was supposed to be, alanine appeared, meaning basically that it was not the amino acid which was recognized. Had the amino acid been recognized, alanine would not have been placed in that protein instead of cysteine. The system would have put cysteine and cysteine only. But it, this system recognizes the RNA, tRNA. So that's why the, it did not matter what amino acid that particular tRNA was carrying. It recognized the tRNA and it used it for the protein synthesis. So protein synthesis machinery recognizes the anticodon of the charged tRNA and not the amino acid attached to it. Now let's look at the animation of what we have talked about. Here is the amino acid, valine in this case, attaching to the amino acid tRNA synthetase. Here is ATP molecule. Here the high energy bond between AMP and the amino acid has been formed. Now comes in the, the tRNA molecule and the amino acid has been attached to the, to the three prime hydroxyl group of that particular tRNA molecule. So this is a very... Um, very, very, as I mentioned, conserved system. It, a specific tRNA will only bind its respective amino acid and its respective amino acid only. And that's why we refer to it as a second genetic code.